Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the named item drops that come from the Need Expedition in New World. This is going to be talking about the update that comes October 18th. That Need Expedition is going to be a long expedition that has huge, huge potential to drop your best in slot armor, weapons, jewelry, and we're going to talk exactly about what items you should be looking for and how to get them. There are some items where you are going to have to do specific things like run an M8 or an M9 mutation. So you're going to want to know what to be doing to get those specific drops. I will say as well, thank you to New World Database as well as New World Fans for providing the information. If you guys haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. Let's get into the video. So first off, we have Sobix Hunger. This is a very, very nice item to drop. It's a named item, of course, like all the other ones we're going to talk about today. And it's cool because it's dropping expedition-wide. So you're not going to have to kill specific bosses. You're not going to have to do a specific high-level mutation. This is a named drop that you can get from pretty much any mob in the dungeon. So Sobix Hunger, looking really, really strong with the Keen, Keenly Jagged, and Refreshing. Obviously going to be providing you strength as well. I do want to take a look at the next one now being Arcubus. So Arcubus is a very, very strong, uh, what is it, musket. There we go. I, I knew it was something really, really strong. I just forgot what it was. The reason this is strong is because you're actually going to inflict played crits. You're also going to have light and heavy attacks dealing more damage. The only thing that's a little bit lackluster is probably the Shirking Flames. Um, but realistically, guys, this is a really, really strong build, or sorry, a musket. If you are looking for maybe a pre-bis musket, or if you really need them plagued crits to continue on. But this is expedition wide as well. Next up, we have the Ornament of Leglets, or I'm not sure how to actually pronounce that. You can see here, Ornament of Legates. There we go. So 29 strength. We do have Mortal Power, and we have Shirking Lightning and Keenly Empowered. So if you're going for a very, very powerful build, well, you have it with Ornament of Legates. I want to go over to the next one because this one's probably one I'm not going to be jumping too far into is the ornament. But I want to take a look at Jupiter or Hand of Jupiter. A very, very cool name at the very least. It has Plagued Crits, Vicious, and Refreshing Move, which light and heavy attacks reduce your active weapon cooldowns by 2.8%. Very, very strong Ice Gauntlet here. I think a lot of people are going to start using these things. And the really cool thing about a Need Expedition is we're seeing a lot more Plagued Crit items come out of the Anita Expedition. We need these in the game to deal with those healers and 3v3s and OPR and really wars as well, any PvP in general. This is going to be a really, really good item for that. This is, by the way, Expedition-wide, and General Crassus or Crassus is one of the main drops as well for he's one of the bosses. He's going to be one of the main people that drop this as well. So next up, we have Legates Pride, which is a pretty cool name as well. So we are getting some cool name drops. Uh, here we have Corrupted Bane. We have Critical Damage with Vicious and Shirking Lightning. This could be a very nice, uh, This well, it's a great sword, so it is going to give you that dexterity, but this could be a really, really good Corrupted Bane item to kind of farm for. This will help you, obviously, in the dungeon as a need is half Ancient, half Corrupted. So very, very solid there for PvE. Next up, we have Ja of Bez. So you guys will have to call me out if I'm saying these things wrong. I would assume I am at least a, a little bit. We have the 30 dexterity on this spear with mortal refreshment, vicious, and keenly empowered. Nothing too crazy. Probably won't be going for that one, but it is, you know, it's a nice pre bis if you are looking for something that's, or maybe if you're new to the game even, or if you don't have any good spears yet, maybe that's something you could use for a little bit. So I cannot spell this next one. I'm trying to look to my left while talking on my right, and it makes it a little bit hard here to type these in. But let's get to the Shariots or Shariteers bow. Uh, you guys can let me know how to say that one too. Oof. Lasting Rain of Arrows, so slow in bleed, lasts 29% longer. We have Vicious and the Headshot Damage with the Vorpal. This could be a very niche kind of bow. I think there's times where this could actually be very, very useful if you are going to hit those Rain of Arrows. Uh, just not many people taking Rain of Arrows right now for that unfortunately. So because of nobody really taking Rain of Arrows, this is a bow that can maybe bring people back to it. We'll see. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the next one in line, though. This one's Ligo. And by the way, Shariteer's bow is from Horan, Ja, or Dija of Bez. The one we talked about is from Hiru or Anpu. And then Legate's Pride is from General Crisis. So I forgot to mention where those were from, but let's get on to Ligo, which is from Lucis or Lucius. So that's one of the bosses as well in the dungeon, obviously. This one gives you played crits, 
keenly empowered and vicious, which is very nice. Anything with plagued crits that does also have vicious or, um, you know, keenly empowered on there, it's going to be nice to have as well. So very, very strong. He or he go, or I don't know how you guys are going to pronounce all these. You're probably laughing at some of the pronunciations we have, but that's what we're dealing with here. Claw of Orcus. I think I got this one right. Unless it's Orceus, but there's no I. So Orcus, I would go with that. Uh, this is from Pluto. Pluto, the boss Pluto in the dungeon, is going to drop you a nice Void Gauntlet with Shirking Arcane, Life Stealing, and Keenly Empowered. Nothing too crazy there. Uh, we do have Darien's Spatha next. So let's take a look at that. Darien's Spatha. This is going to be a sword and shield combination with, uh, you know, swords being used for damage now occasionally. This is going to be a very, very strong one to get. Light and heavy attacks doing more damage, critical chance, and light and heavy attacks reduce your active weapon cooldowns. Very, very strong. I think this is going to be something a lot of people want to hunt for. And like I said, Darien Spatha is from Scipio, the boss Scipio. Um, so that's cool as well. We have Beast Fang up next. Beast Fang, a very cool name to have as a weapon. Of course, it's a rapier. Omnidirectional evade, rogue, and keen. Very, very strong, actually, for specific builds. Rogue, omnidirectional evade are very, very good. Um, not many people are taking omni omnidirectional evade outside of PvE, but some are. So it depends on what you uh, you know want to do with your rapier. But very, very cool Beast Fang either way. Coming from Godling Kepri Supernal. Supposedly that is the place to hunt this one down inside the expedition. So next up we have the Staff of the Throne. Staff of the Throne is a blessed, refreshing move. Keen Beacon Staff of the Throne when it comes to a life staff. This one's fairly interesting. It has some cool kind of perks to it. I do like it altogether, uh, but there is, you know, there's a lot of great ones already out there. But Staff of the Throne could be utilized in, uh, you know, a couple people's hands, I'm sure. I think a lot of people may hunt for this. This is Hiru, the boss. Hiru drops this one. Next up, we have Menevin, Menevin Staff. And this one is going to be an intelligence, obviously, fire staff. Light and heavy attacks, reducing active weapon cooldowns, keenly fortified and vicious. You'd have to be doing something pretty specific to want to hunt this one down. This is from Anpu. Um, but not many people are going to want to hunt this thing down because it doesn't really go with today's meta at the very least. So we have next Scourge of the Depths. Scourge of the Depths is a Void Gauntlet with Petrifying Scream, Plagued Crits, and Enchanted. This is definitely one of the best, really in my opinions, Void Gauntlets out there. I love the idea of Plagued Crits, and obviously Inflicting Disease is going to be helpful with Petrifying Scream. Definitely look out for this one. It's going to be a very, very strong, maybe best in slot for a lot of you guys, and Probably going to continue to be that way. So next up, we have Unyielding Cleaver. Unyielding Cleaver is going to be a drop. By the way, that Scourge of the Depths was going to be from Mutated 8 Plus Dungeons only. Um, and now we have the Unyielding Cleaver, which is also Mutated 8 Dungeons only. Or above, obviously. You can go Mutated 8, 9, or 10 to get this one. So Thwarting Strikes, Keenly Empowered and Sheer Footing is the Unyielding Cleaver, which is obviously a new greatsword. Next up, we have Grimbolt, which is another one that is a Mutated 8+. So we are seeing some options for you know some of this gear. You have to do higher level content. We have Keen, Mortal Power, and Keen Speed on this Grimbolt. Pretty cool name again, but uh, just not going to have too much of a use in most people's hands. Next up, we have Infernal Dread, another Mutated 8 Dungeon Drop. This one's going to be stable incinerate, refreshing move, and refreshing, or sorry, refreshing in general. So this is going to be a specific niche build again, uh, something that many people probably won't use or utilize. And now we have some mutated nine dungeon drops. We have four of them to be exact. The first one's going to be a pretty cool name, Spine Chiller. So you have to be doing mutated nine or ten to get this one. It's going to be deadly frost. So when frigid showers upgrade is active, ice showers frostbite debuff will actually deal 8% weapon damage per second to affected enemies. Ice Shower cooldown reduced by 14%. Has Life Stealing, Chain Ice. It's a very, very strong Ice Gauntlet in some people's hands, but Life Steal and Chain Ice is something that a lot of people are starting to stay you know, pretty far away from when it comes to an Ice Gauntlet in general. So just okay when it comes to this uh, Spain, or sorry, Spine Chiller. But next up, we have Second Strike, which sounds like it'd be a great sword. We'll find out here in just a second. It's actually going to be a Warhammer, which is pretty cool. Has Trenchant Strikes, Refreshing Move, and Lifesteal. So we are starting to get some Lifesteal in these M9s, it looks like. 
Hunter's Grace is next. We'll see if this is a musket with lifesteal potentially, which would be kind of unfortunate because I feel like that might be one of the worst combos there is. So it is a bow, Hunter's Grace. Uh, it does look like we are going to see lifesteal on it, shirking nature and energizing evade shot. Energizing evade shot's great. You could maybe get away with lifesteal being okay, but uh, shirking nature, I don't know. It's just not a great, great build in my opinion. Um, but not too bad. I want to take a look, though, at the next one's Companion's Courage. So Companion's Courage is going to be the next one on the list. It's a life staff with Keenly Fortified, Fortifying Sacred Ground, and Blessed. So a lot of people may start using this as well. Fortifying Sacred Ground, very nice. Blessed, very nice. Keenly Fortified. So a very, very nice life staff there. As we go down to some of the armor drops, we're going to see a lot more with where they're going to drop. So all those were mutated 9+, plus. those last four. But these are where drops are going to be very, very specific. They're going to be name drops from specific bosses. The first six are from General Crasis, or General Crosses, depending on how you want to say that one. The Golden Manica is first, and I typed that one in completely wrong. Uh, Golden Manica. We have, what is it, Azurite's Golden Manica? Yeah, that's it. So we see 25 con, Corrupted Ward on it, which is really nice. Empowering Breaker and Refreshing Ward. So these are nice because they're going to be giving you that Corrupted Ward, which is going to be very, very good for PvE content. So if you're looking for PvE armor, you're going to have a lot of options here when it comes to drops from the boss General Krasis. So here, another one, Corrupted Ward, very, very similar. Um, and all these are going to be very similar. So I'm going to go pretty quick through these just because... These are going to be the basic PvE Corrupted Ward sets that you're going to be dropping, or they're going to be dropping from General Crisis. So another Corrupted Ward, of course, and then the last one is the Galio, or the Galia. Um, so here we go. We see this one, Corrupted Ward. It's a heavy headwear, and it's going to be a very, very nice tank Corrupted Ward set for sure. Next up, we have the Golden Lorica. So Golden Lorica is next in line, and if we take a look here, it's going to be a heavy chest with more Corrupted uh, ward on it. So Corrupted Ward is going to be something you're going to be able to farm very, very easily from General Crisis. As we have one more from General Crisis, it's going to be called the Lorica. Sa yeah, this one, whatever this is, Sagmeta. I don't know how to even pronounce this one, to be honest with you guys. But it's going to be another one that uh, does have that Corrupted Ward. Unfortunately, it has Shirking Energy, or sorry, yeah, Sturdy Energy and Shirking Fortification. So you could actually use this quite a bit in a lot of these dungeons, a lot of these Corrupted Ward dungeons. Uh, but we have all what we had from General Crisis is done. Now we're over to Hiru when it comes to where it drops and the specific weapons, and, or sorry, armor. Um, so Sun Lords is next up. I believe we could be seeing straight up just more Corrupted Ward sets. Or sorry, Ancient Ward sets, that's now we're getting Ancients, and they're going to be light, it looks like. So we're going to have all of these being light Ancient sets, um, and I'm not going to go through them all. You can see them here. Sun Lords, there, there's a ton of them. So you can see Sun Lords Boots, Sun Lords, there, there's so many. It's a full armor set you can see here. Um, you can just actually click through them all. And then the gear score variance, obviously, between 590 to 600. But if you upgrade it, it will, since it's named, and you can see that it's called Legendary Named, it will turn over to Legendary. So these are all from Hiru. Next up, we have Honorable Shoes, which is kind of cool. So we're going to skip through some of those sets, or not some of those sets, but some of those gears pieces, just because you know what's going to be on them. Honorable Shoes is next up in line. It's going to be the Refreshing, Shirking, Fortification, and Elemental Aversion very actually nice shoes. Uh, this could be used in PvP depending on if you need another PvP perk, or not PvP perk, but if you need like Fireball Impact or something like that in one of your pieces of gear and you already have all of those already done, this is not a bad option for sure. It's going to have some very basic solid stuff when it comes to PvP. You're going to want that elemental version, refreshing and shirking fortification to keep you alive. Ideally, you want resilient as well, of course, but uh, not bad as well for uh, uh, really a drop from Shea, which I haven't seen many drops from Shea. I don't know what that is. It's maybe just a kind of mini boss in the dungeon, but uh, very, very cool. Next up, we have the Blue Crown. The Blue Crown is going to be dropped from Sa, S-A-H. The other one was S-H-A-I, so they are different. The Blue Crown is going to be a focus, refreshing, physical aversion, and shirking fortification as well which is a pretty nice uh, pretty nice headwear. Unfortunately, it's heavy, so it's probably never going to get used. Heavy focus is just not ever going to be in meta again, hopefully, for everyone's sake. Um, but let's take a look at gauntlets. It's going to be called the Guardian's Gauntlets. 
it does look like is going to be another Ancient Ward set. So a lot of the armor is going to be specifically just to help you out with the dungeon, giving you Ancient and Corrupted Ward gear, which is pretty nice. You want to be able to farm the lower tiers, and then eventually by farming the lower tiers, get the gear to farm the higher tiers. So very, very cool. Heavy Glove by Anpu that drops. Next up, we have the jewelry. We have only two jewelry pieces. We have the Priestess Charm and the Soul Binding Band. Uh, the first one, Priestess Charm, is actually, I would assume, a focus amulet from Hiru. So it's from Hiru. Let's see what it is that we are going to be getting out of the Priestess Charm. It's actually going to be Strength. Look at that. So it's going to be Strength, Refreshing Toast. So potions actually cool down 28% faster. It's huge. Um, it's going to give you Nimble, which is also huge, and reduces active cooldowns after it exiting the dodge animation pretty solid jewelry um, does depend on what you're trying to go for but not bad at all for a kind of a pre bis jewelry or earring and depending on the build it actually could even be better so let's take a look at the soul binding band here we go soul binding band is the focus there's the focus one it's going to be giving you refreshing infected and nature damage Mm, it's not bad it depends on what you're kind of going for if you are going the uh, void gauntlet route with your with your uh, life staff, you know, you are going to get that infected, which is nice. You're going to have the refreshing, which is nice, but the nature damage, we don't really need nature damage per se. So this is probably more of a PVE band if you are going to be looking for a PVE focus ring on your, you know, runs. This is something that could be useful. So those are going to be all the drops. I went through all of the weapons, all of the armor. Uh, I will say the weapons were more fun to go through just because you were going to be able to see that a lot of those are going to be used not just in PvE, but PvP as well. And the armor and the jewelry is mostly PvE, it seems like. But these are the name drops. Just imagine some of the random drops you can get. And there's probably even some name drops that we don't know about maybe yet. That would be exciting as well. But these are everything we know about according to NewWorldFans.com and New World Database. So thank you guys again for tuning in. If you guys want to learn more about really the upcoming updates of New World and everything related to New World, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on.